Hello guys and welcome to our first Python based project video. Now, we're going to be covering uh, a tutorial on how to make like a BuzzFeed sort of quiz. You know, like those types of quizzes that says, answer these questions. We will guess your favorite color or we will guess your favorite zodiac sign. You know, um, those types of quizzes that you see on like a ton of uh, social media websites and stuff. That's basically what we're going to be creating. Specifically, I'm in my example, I'm going to be creating a personality based quiz, which will ask just two questions, right? You guys can expand on it. It'll ask two questions and based on the responses, I'm going to give them one out of four personalities that I have to offer. Okay. So before I start, I just want to go over how project videos work within Python. And this also is the same for HTML. Basically, there's going to be checkpoints, right? I'm just going to show you the entire code. I'm not going to type it out like I usually do in my tutorial videos. So I'm going to have a chunk of code and it might look really scary at first, but we're going to break it down step by step. I'm going to show you what each part does. And then you can look at the source code and copy paste it and change it based on what you want to change. Like don't do the exact same as me. Don't do the exact same thing as me. I want you to be a bit more unique in your approach. Okay, then let's get started. Okay, so we're here. Our first checkpoint looks kind of scary, but we'll get through it. First, let's see what it does. Right now we have, we haven't finished it, right? It's our first checkpoint. So this is the only thing that it really prints out. First, our introduction and then our question. We have four choices, spicy, sweet, savory, and salty. Uh, and then we can enter our answer here. And now that I think about it, I think it would have been better if I checked with A, B, C, and D instead of spicy, sweet, savory, and salty. That would just be easier. Um, you know what? In fact, I'm going to change it right now. I'm going to make it A. Oops. I'm going to make it A, B. Oh my God. B. C and then D. Okay, so sorry for that digression. Uh, this makes more sense. And the reason why we're making lowercase instead of uppercase is because of the dot lower. Remember that function takes the input and completely lowercases it so that if the user enters like a capital A by mistake, well, I guess they're supposed to, but let's say they enter a capital A, it converts it to a lowercase A and then it compares. And let's say the user likes spicy food, right? We're going to, oh, I forgot to talk about these counters. So these counters are basically our personalities, right? Each personality has a counter. They start at zero, but let's say a question shows that they're more inclined towards being like strong willed or caring. Then we increase the counter by one, as you can see here. And the plus equals basically means like strong willed equals strong willed plus one, right? We're setting strong willed equal to itself, but adding one. Instead of doing that, we have a short case plus equals one, which basically means strong will just add one to it. Caring, just add one to it. If it's B, uh, what's this one? Curious, just add one to it, right? And yeah, that's pretty simple. Um, and then also make sure that you have the else statement, right? And then we're just going to, in case of an else, we're basically just going to print out, uh, what should we print out? You have entered an invalid answer. This question will not count. And I know some of you, some of you smart people out there might be wondering, there must be a way that we can ask the question again, right? Like you've seen, you've seen like those like forms that ask you for the input again, if you enter it wrong. Well, that's a little bit more complex. That's like, that gets into something called looping, which we'll learn in a bit, but I want to just go over concepts we know right now. So we'll just leave it at this, you know, and then you can see the note here in the source code. It's basically everything I talked about. Okay. 
So let's move on to the second question, which has a bit more variety to it. Okay, so now we're looking at question number two. Now, just look at it, see if there's any differences that you see. I mean, uh, let's run this actually. Okay, and then I'm going to enter my first answer, which is I usually like sweet food, not going to lie. Right, and then our second question, we are separating it by a line. And then we're asking what's their favorite color. Kind of generic, you know, but every single quiz must have a what is your favorite color. Okay. Um, now, you might have noticed by now that we're actually adding more than one. We're adding points to more than one variable. And we're adding a different amount of points to each variable. Now, if you, if you have a weighted scale, like if you're in middle school, and if you're using infinite campus, um, you might you might know that, like for example, tests are worth forty percent, and then homework is only worth ten percent, right? What this means is that let's say a test was out of ten points, right? Ten ten times point four would be four, so it's technically worth like four points in this grading category. But homework, let's say if it was worth ten points same as the test but it's actually you know like comparing the two it's worth only a fourth of tests right so in the same way what we're doing right here is we're giving more priority like for example if they say black i'm giving more priority to the eccentric or like the weird uh counter right i'm adding two to it but then black is also like kind of like showing like a strong will tendency so i'm going to give it one point instead of two because Black is more eccentric than strong-willed, right? Same here. Blue. I kind of associate blue with like a caring, caring color. I mean, pink is also, but I'm just using like simple colors. And then curious as one because I had to fit in curious somewhere. It's hard to find a curious color, you know? Like, what color is curious? Magenta, hot pink? I don't know. I'm, I'm not a color person. Um, anyways, yeah, that's basically what question two is about. Very simple. Now, the hard part is the next part. So I want you to make sure you completely understand. And if you don't, then make sure that you ask on the Discord or ask me like on, on site, on our workshop, what exactly is going on in our next part. Okay, so like I said, I'm only going to be showing you only two questions. So now here's the moment of truth. How are we going to check to see which counter is the highest counter? Now this seems easy at first, but to a computer, you can't just look at the data and say, oh, which one's the greatest, right? You have to go through a series of logical steps and that's what Python is, it's all about logic. Now there's easier ways to do it than what I'm showing you right now, but that requires stuff that you haven't learned yet. And I want, like I said before, I want, to use things that you've already learned, like conditionals, right? Um, and this and statement right here might be a bit confusing, but if you think about it, it's very simple. It's very logical, in fact. Okay, so what I'm doing, essentially, is I'm comparing in, let's, let's look at this one first, okay? This if statement. I'm comparing caring with strong will, seeing if caring is greater than it. And I'm seeing if caring is greater than eccentric. And I'm seeing if caring is greater than curious. I'm seeing if caring is greater, greater than all of them, right? Which is what we want. We want a, the counter that's the greatest of them all. If it is, we're gonna print, you are a very caring person, okay? Um, oh yeah, this comment is just saying like, please like add a bit more elaboration. Like wh why, how did you get this? Like how, how from the quiz did you get that we are a very caring person? Like I'd say something like, oh, uh, you like very serene colors and you're into like very sweet food or something like that, right? Instead of just saying you're a very caring person. I mean, I guess you could go like this, but you know, I want to see a bit of spice, a bit of variety in your code, in your projects, in fact. Um, yeah, that's a short digression. Uh, let's look at eccentric now, right? So if let's say caring wasn't the greatest one, let's say for example, eccentric was the greatest one, but caring is the second greatest one. So this would 
<clears throat> caring is greater than strong will? Yes, that's true. Caring is greater than curious? That's true. But caring is not greater than eccentric. Okay? And what these and statements are doing is that it will only print out you are a very caring person if all three of these comparators right here, caring is greater than strong willed, caring is greater than eccentric, and caring is greater than curious, if all of them are true, if even one of them aren't true, then we're not going to print out that statement. Okay? Then we have a centric. Centric is greater than strong willed, true. Centric is greater than caring, true. Centric is greater than curious, true. Then we're gonna print out this statement. You see how it works, right? Um, just be sure to understand how it works. You don't have to copy paste it. I mean, you don't have to not copy paste it, right? You can copy paste it. Just change the variable names and stuff. But I really want you to understand what, what's happening right here. Because uh, it's important It's important to understand like big lines of code, break it down step by step, and understand what's going on. Okay? Now, if we run this entire thing, okay, uh, I'm going to take this quiz for myself. I like sweet food, right? Um, and then I also like the color red. You are a very caring person which I am. I'm giving you all these videos for free. So be sure to come to our workshop and support us. Shameless sponsor. See you guys in the next one.